Hello, my name is Stiley Hayward. I would like to welcome you to the Blessed Hope Ministry. We are a King James grounded family Bible study. These lessons are not to be a substitute for regular church attendance. Nightly I direct my family through the Bible by chapter and verse. We request you to join us and to study from God and His Son Jesus Christ. You may have permission to like, send, or encourage our studies with family or friends. Edification of what God has and what He desires in our life. Study to show thyself approved unto God. A workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly divine the word of truth. You may use our studies, but I request that you do not abuse them. For YouTube videos, subscribe below for more videos. And place the thumbs up and leave a comment or email me. Thank you. Numbers chapter 17. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and take of every one of them a rod, according to the house of their fathers, twelve fathers, twelve tribes, of their princes, now that's interesting, princes, royalty, monarchy, is, but this is the Bible way. The only place you find Presidents in the Bible is under Babylonian government. You want to be a Christian nation, you want to live by the Bible. I'm sorry, the, the Bible stands out as kings. And here's princes. According to the house of their fathers, 12 rods. Write thou every man's name upon his rod. And thou shalt write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. So Judah, Manasseh, Ephraim, Dan. They get a, a rod with their name. When it comes to Levi. Aaron's rod. That he holds. It's going to have the name Levi on it. Why? Didn't we just have a problem with the Levite family? Didn't we just have a problem with, with the Reuben family? Or the Simeon? Reuben's family? So what God's doing is, we've had a main attack, and then Moses got blamed for opening up the earth and swallowing everybody up and closing up the earth. And God's like, you know what? Let's prove this once for all. So there are 12 rods. Manasseh and Ephraim. And if they are divided with Mass, Manasseh and Ephraim, the two children of Joseph, because Levi doesn't get the inheritance, then actually there are 13 rods now. Levi. But it's not Levi, it's Aaron. Now if he punches, because it doesn't say, if he puts Ephraim and Manasseh together under Joseph, then you have 12 rods with Levi. But there's no Levi it says Aaron. So in actuality, the way they named that tribe, Levi has, has been not counted with the children of Israel because he does not have the inheritance of the land. He belongs to God. So here are 12 rods with Ephraim and Manasseh. And the 13th rod, it's not Levi, it's Aaron. So Aaron's given up a lot. Here's his rod. Moses gave his rod to God. And all the things that that rod of Moses did to the Egyptians, now it's Aaron's rod. And Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi, for one rod shall be for the head of the house of their fathers. Again, Judah, Reuben, Simeon. And thou shalt lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony. That's in the holy place. Where I will meet with you. God says, I'm coming down about this, this thing. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from me the murmurings 
of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. So it's still going on. The troubles against Moses and Aaron by the people are still going on. And you would assume that the earth opening up, which was the last great event that is, I can't do that, Moses can't do that. And after that has happened, Moses is getting the blame for killing the people. Fire is coming down, they're starting to kill the people. And the people after that are still saying, well, who do you think you are, Moses? God hears it. Again, you run into the thing today, the opposite. There are people, I've heard the preachers say, oh, you know, touch not my anointed. And, you know, give, don't give me a hard time because God will take care of you like he done. Yeah, and God's never said to anybody that he spoke face to face to you. And yet Paul gives us a warning that many of the ministers that are in the pulpits today are of Satan himself. And when we look at the Bible, we got to realize that Moses is an extreme, great wonder loved by God that he was with Jesus Christ. And the three, Peter, James, and John, and Elijah with Jesus Christ and Mount Transfiguration. There was no other pastor there. Now Moses died, and when Moses died, uh, Michael came down, and then they, the, him and the Satan starts having a, a dispute over that body of Moses. Now I'm sorry, I, I've never seen a, a, an argument in a cemetery over a pastor's body. And then Moses and Elijah are going to show back up in the tribulation. Now a lot of churches teach that we're going to go through the tribulation, but we're not. You realize how much love this guy had for the children of Israel and how much love he had with God? No one's face ever shone as much as Moses' face shone when he was with God. And only him, Jesus, and Elijah ever had 40 days and 40 nights without no food and water and survived. And Moses spent on the children of Israel and every one of them, their princes, Gave him a rod apiece for each priest, prince once, according to their father's houses, even 12 rods, and the rod of Aaron was among their rods. So it looks like 13. Manasseh and Ephraim, and then Aaron's rod. And Moses laid up the rods before the Lord in the tabernacle of witness. Moses is not a priest. And yet he's in the priestly office. Aaron and his sons. Remarkable Moses. Aaron is Moses and Aaron are brothers. Moses is not a child of Aaron. Moses is younger than Aaron. And yet Aaron has to treat Moses with respect. As a, a position. Elder. Aaron's older, and God steps in with Mary when they Mary, who's older than Moses, when they start speaking about Moses' wife. And it came to pass that on the morrow, uh, tomorrow, I mean, you always want to say tomorrow, on morrow, Moses went into the tabernacle of witness. And behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded life from death. The resurrected rod. That pictures Jesus Christ. Dead stick. Who knows how long that rod has been cut off from the tree. Aaron's been carrying it. It's dead. Totally dead. And it didn't hit the cold slab where Moses put it down. Oh, I'm alive. Like people say what Jesus did. It is dead. It is dead as much as Jonah died. Though people don't believe that. It budded. And brought forth buds. And bloomed blossoms. And yielded almonds. Oh there's an interesting thing. The rod that Aaron carried was an almond tree. Now 
Jesus Christ is the picture of this rod. This rod is the picture of Jesus Christ. It brought forth leaves, it brought forth flowers, and it brought forth fruit. So that has to be a picture of Jesus Christ in the resurrected state. So let's look at Exodus 25, 33. Look at a couple of verses here. Exodus 25, verse 33. Let's see something here. Three bowls made like unto almonds, with a knob and a flower in one branch, and three bowls made like almonds in the other branch, with a knob and a flower. So the six branches that come out of the candlestick. What does that candlestick in Revelation chapter 1 speak about? That speaks about the church. In this candlestick, the very top of the candlestick holds an oil. That's the bowl. And in that oil, there's the wick, which you light and gives oil. That oil that's in that candlestick is the Holy Spirit. Revelation chapter 1 says the candlesticks there are the churches. So here we are. A candlestick. Of all the fruits and all the things that God said that can be, you have almonds showing up. And look, a flower. So we see the resurrected rod of Jesus Christ. And then we see the church with an almond. Holding the Holy Spirit inside of it. The Holy Spirit is inside of a believer. And let's check out Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 5. Solomon's book, right after Proverbs, Ecclesiastes 12, chapter, chapter 12, verse 5. Now, verse 3 down to 7 is about old age. It describes a person that's grown older. But when we see chapter 12, verse 5, Now, there are other places where there are almonds, but let's look at these places. And also, when they shall be afraid. When you get old, you get fear. Fears happen of that which is high. You get fear of heights. The fears shall be in the way. The fears will stop you from doing certain things. And the almond tree shall flourish. Okay? Almond trees flourish Aaron's blossom, budded, flowered, white, white hair as you get older. You remember what the what the hair color of Jesus in Revelation 1? White. Why? Because all the problems the church gives them. Cause them to get white hair. Paul the aged. As Christians mature, they go to a point where their height, their, their hair gets white. And the book of Proverbs speaks about giving reverence to a man that has white hair. So we're to grow old. So we are the vessel that, that inside that vessel is the Holy Spirit giving light. We are the light of the world. A candlestick's not hid. And then we're to flourish white and old. And then really don't know what... The, Jeremiah 1.11. Let me just. Jeremiah 1.11. I don't really know what to say about this one. But let's look at it. Because it's interesting. Almond. Jeremiah 1.11. That dead stick. It was dead. Listen. I've heard the reports. That when they put Jesus' body down that cold slab. It. Bling. As much as, you know, if you're out in the warm and you go inside of a freezer, you know, you're kind of, but that stick was dead. That stick, the high priest stick, the high priest is Jesus Christ. And Jeremiah 111, moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said, Jeremiah said, I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Uh-oh. Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen 
that thou hast well seen. It's all in. I will hasten my word to perform it. That's like, and those two verses go together because the next verse we start talking about a seeding pot. Jeremiah, what do you see? I see an almond tree rod. That's good because I'm going to do what my word is. What's John 1, 1 say about the word? It's Jesus Christ. That almond rod that comes from Jeremiah, you run back to the Aaron's rod. If that rod is the word of God and that word of God is Jesus Christ, well, that rod was dead. Well, now it's alive. This is three, and there's other places where, where almonds, but life from the dead. And when Jesus Christ suffered and died and was buried and rose again, according to, uh, let's go to Isaiah 53 about the, the buds. Isaiah 53. You know what buds, you know, you know what almonds are, don't you? They're a nut. They're a seed. <laughs> and the thing about that, a nut, doesn't the Bible say that what we do for God, not the message, but preaching, isn't that called foolishness? It's nuts. <laughs> Is that what people think when you preach on the street and they come knocking on your door? But Isaiah 53. Um, let's see. Shall see his seed. Where's that? 10. 10. All right. 5310. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. <laughs> Isn't that what they're doing to Moses right now? Putting to grief? When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, that's Jesus, he shall see his seed. It brought forth almonds. Almonds can become other trees. That's us. Christ is the rod that's dead, that's now alive. The blossoming in the almonds, that's us. And watch what you see here. He shall prolong his days. Get the white hair. Revelation 1. So that budded, if that dead stick came back to life and it has flowers and buds and almonds, those flowers, buds, and almonds are us. The bud, that's the very beginning. That's the new birth. The blossoms, you're a little older. You groan in the Lord. And those almonds, Paul said, the aged. I'm glad that's a more remarkable that I said that. That the Lord showed me that one thing, Isaiah 53. 10. It's remarkable. And then watch this. And Moses brought out the rods. That rod that blossomed and bloomed, the almonds, has done it in no one's sight. And then when you read about the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the only ones, the only people that we know that were there were the, were the, uh, the guards. And we, you know, they, we think they took whatever. They fell down, they panicked, and maybe left. But Mary is sitting there, they're coming. Not sit. Mary and the women are coming, and they see that the stone has been rolled away. No one's seen that but the two angels. Moses brought out the rods from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. The Bible speaks in 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 the recount of Jesus' resurrection. He was seen above four hundred people, children of Israel, chosen by God. And they looked and took every man his rod. <laughs> Why did my rod do it? Because you weren't chosen by God. And you'll find in the in the in the prophets you'll speak about Jesus Christ, the rod, the branch. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept. Acts chapter 1, the resurrected Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ who is alive, has now ascended back to heaven, back before the holy place, in the holy place, seated at the right hand of the Father. Bring that rod back. Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels.
The story of the gospel, the preaching of the gospel is to be against the rebels that you're wrong and the Bible's right. And thou shalt quite, quite take away their murmurings from me that they die not. That budded, that budded rod of Aaron is supposed to say, hey, listen, who is the priest? Aaron. That's the priest. Who is our high priest according to Hebrews? Jesus Christ. Any others, they're just dead sticks with no life. Micah complained, well, you stole my gods. Well, what kind of God is he if he can be carried away, stolen? And Moses did so as the Lord commanded him. And so did he. And you'll find later on that that rod that budded is found in the ark of the covenant. With the manna? Well, what's, what's the manna type of? Jesus Christ. With the Ten Commandments, what's Jesus Christ? The fulfillment of the Ten Commandments. It's all about Jesus. And the children of Israel spake unto Moses, saying, Behold, we die, we perish. We all perish. They're upset. And what's God's answer to them? Verse 12. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That dead stick that you put in that tomb has come alive, is alive, and if you're going to perish, believe on that stick. Whosoever, and whosoever, come, whosoever, 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 oh, God, you're so great. Whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die. You assert your authority again. God said, you're dead. Now, how do you know that it says that, you know, whosoever cometh anything near unto the tabernacle of the Lord shall die? How do you know that that's the usurping authority? Because what we read last night in chapter 16. And King Asa goes into the holy place and offers incense. It's a problem with the incense. People are too attracted to it. And he gets leprosy. And he's not trying to usurp the authority. He's just in there trying to offer the incense. And he's not supposed to. And what we dealt in chapter 16 is a bunch of people coming up to Moses and saying, we're the ones. And you've got a bunch of pastors and preachers running around today saying, we're the ones. You gotta watch out. Shall we be consumed with dying? And the chapter's closed off with death. If you usurp the authority over God's being. It is Aaron. He has established Aaron. And the only unestablishing of Aaron of chapter 17 we find in the New Testament is the great high priest, the Messiah, the anointed one, sent off by the book of Hebrews to be Jesus Christ. After the order of Melchizedek. And Jesus Christ, that one high priest that will never die again, who is always going to be seated, is not going to be his son going to be the high priest, and is not going to be his son to be the high priest, but Jesus Christ forever the high priest. Don't you ever assert his authority, or he'll come back and he'll cast you off in a lake of fire that burns forever. So, it was the high priest that put Jesus on that cross. <laughs> 